So I want to share with you all what the Lord is saying to our apostolic center and about our worship. So this past week, he gave me five things that he said we need to establish, not only in this house, but in this region and in his kingdom. In the beginning, I thought these things were only for a certain assignment. But this morning as I woke up, he was showing me that this is really um, goes far beyond that, far beyond just this upcoming assignment. He said it's something that he wants us to focus on in this next season of worship. So we're transitioning out of an, out of a priestly worship, which is where we offer up our praises to the Lord. We will always do that. That's always important. That position positions us where we need to be to move into the next stage. But we're moving into a season of apostolic worship in this house. And so if you remember in this last year, the Lord gave us a word. And part of that word was no longer will you just say what you see, but you will see what you say. So what he's saying in that is that part of the prophetic piece is we see a vision or we see the heart of the Father and we speak that out. And we will always do that. But when we move in our authority and take our rightful place, ruling and reigning with Jesus, then we will move to the place where what we say we will see come to pass. And I believe that's where we're moving into worship. So these foundational things are going to be what we are building our sound around in the future. So as you come into the pre-service worship, just open your heart to that and keep in mind that these are the words you're going to get. You're going to get words. We have scriptures that we're going to be decreeing and declaring and releasing that lay the foundation. And the foundation of this is... To share what the Lord said just briefly about these things. He said repentance, that we have to repent to get to a place where the Lord will hear our prayers. So we as a body will repent and we will be positioned to pray from a place of right standing with God because God hears and answers the prayers of the righteous. We will put on the breastplate of righteousness and forgiveness. We will forgive as the power of forgiveness is what frees us and others to hear and know God in his fullness. We will honor Jesus. He said this is so important. And these things we have to do intentionally. I was like, Lord, these are basic things. This should already be done. He said, no, you have to intentionally establish the foundation. And that is the foundation that the rest of the work will be able to be launched from. So he says we have to establish Jesus Christ as the head, as the cornerstone of the church intentionally. So we will honor Jesus and acknowledge him as the cornerstone and the head of the church. And he said we have to move into a time of worshiping in spirit and in truth. So we will worship God in spirit and in truth. We will release the sounds, the decrees, and the declarations from heaven to establish God's kingdom in our hearts and upon the earth. And then he also said now it's time to awaken the bride, and that's us. So we will send forth the call for the church to awaken and take her rightful place of power and authority as the bride of Christ. The church will rise up and be the governing body who will equip the saints to carry and steward the outpouring of God's glory. Would you stand and worship with us, please?
Switch me, Kim. Yeah. Good morning. I love this. It's a serious tone. It's a good thing. But we're going to liven it up. We'll pep it up. Don't worry. So I love what Lori was saying. You know, this is a pay decade. Pay in Hebrew is a word for mouth, for declaring. For So your words have a lot of extra authority and weight in this pay decade. So as you declare and decree things, what she was saying is, you know, what we say is what we will see. So we want that spirit connection, amen, where our spirit is leading our soul, which therefore leads our mouth, right? Yes, it's important. Okay. I went on a lot of rabbit trails getting this lesson ready. It's kind of fun. 
So you'll hear those sprinkled in. Oh, and I forgot my camel socks. I laid them out. I never made it to my bag, so I was going to show you my camel socks. So I guess you'll, you'll just have to look forward to that the next month. And I have a new battery in my clicker. I don't know if you remember last month. Couldn't get my <laughs> clicker to work. Okay. Almost ready. I like for this to show me what I'm doing. There it goes. All right, I want to say I R. Another name is Ziv. Do you know where the Hebrew months got their names? So it used to just be numbered. This is the second month. We were told in Exodus to start calling Nisan the first month. So it would be the first month, the second month, the third month. So if you ever dive deep into the Hebrew text, you're gonna, that's what you're going to more than likely see. But it was actually when they went to captivity in Babylon that they started getting name, They started name, giving them solid names. So I, I just my belief, a lot of the names came from Daniel. So that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So that's why sometimes you'll see multiple names too. So IR um, is also Ziv, and we're going to break that down. So as I said, this is the year of 5783, so welcome to the first fruits, to the new moon, to the Rosh Kadesh for this season. Okay, first fruits, we're here to bring our first and our best. Listen to the scripture here in Proverbs 3. Honor the Lord with all your wealth, with the best part of everything you produce. Now, when you read different translations, who in here is a translation scholar? I love to read a scripture in five, six different translations and try to let Holy Spirit show me what he's wanting me to see. This particular scripture interchanges best and first fruits in the, in the, in the translations. So first fruits means your best. So we bring our first and our best at the beginning of each month to honor the God, to bless God, so that we are therefore blessed in our month. Amen? It's trying to go on without me, isn't it? So we're at a pit stop at a moed. So we're going to honor the Lord with our wealth and with the best part of everything you produce or the first fruits of your crops. Everyone say harvest. Harvest, harvest is a key word this month. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Amen. <laughs> okay, we're going to look at the alphabet Vav. Now, we look at the same elements each month. And it's really cool how systematic God is, how he's always giving us type and shadow, or, you know, a recipe. That's how I like to say. Mixes it up, but gives us recipe after recipe so that he can reach each one of us individually and what speaks to us individually and what speaks to us corporately. We're going to look at the constellation Taurus. We're going to look at the tribe of Issachar. Uh, we're going to, the color assigned to this month, now, I've been, I got on some rabbit trails on the stones of the breastplate of righteousness. While she was teaching Wednesday, I was making all these charts. I keep myself entertained and listen. <laughs> I multitask, but anyway, the uh, breastplate, right, had a gemstone for each of the tribes, and there's a lot of debate on what order those were in. So some people, um, they list, there's two lists of stones in the Bible. One's in Exodus. And one is in Revelations 21. If you haven't read Revelations 21 lately, I highly recommend you do that. So a lot of people believe that the Exodus list and the birth order of the sons of Jacob is how that it was laid out on the breastplate righteousness. Well, you can get all mixed up from there. You can say, oh, no, 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 I think it's how it's, list you know, and the Revelation was a continuation of how it was laid out and how it will be at the foundation of the New Jerusalem. Or I think it was how they laid the tribes out. God laid them out at, you know, Moses' tabernacle. And there's just all this back and forth. Nobody really knows. There's no comprehensive list. But So what is the point? The point is there's these beautiful gemstones and colors that God gave us because he is our provider. And that provision is here on the earth, in the stones, in nature. Everything you need, and we're going to unpack that this month, is already here. So the word I kept getting for IR, which is a transition and a connecting month, was expectation. Is your expectation building as your faith builds? Are you going to God with these beautiful words that Lori has been putting out? The list, you know, we all have gotten the list over the last few teachings. You have to, I believe this month is about marrying your expectation so that you can connect and transition in those victory. Amen. This is what IR is all about. We're going to unpack that. So we're also going to look at what we call covenant secrets. Let's define secrets. It's not something that is hidden. It is something that is revealed to you. 
or a recipe that is given to you. God says, I have certain revelation recipes, secrets that I want to give you. And the way you receive those is to be in covenant with me and to build your expectation. So we're going to talk about that. And this is the month of natural healing. Now, last month was miracles. I want you to start seeing how these months build and layer on one another so that our expectation builds and layers as we go through from one piece of our glory mountain to the other. Have who anyone in here ever heard of what about when the other shoe falls? Do you, you know, that kind of, I, I catch myself in that mind. You know, the other shoe is going to have to drop. My life is just too good. You ever get that way? God does not want us. That is, not, that is a lie from Satan. God says, I want to progress you. I want to give you an abundant life. I want to continue to prosper you. So build your expectation every month. Even if you had a stellar year last year, you can expect more. And this is that connecting month for more. Everyone say more. more. So this is a natural healing month. Last month was a miracle, and now I'm going to know that because of the miracles that Christ performed on the cross and getting victory over the prince of the air, Satan himself, I can now know that miracle exists, that's a provision for me, and I'm going to move into natural healing where every cell in my body has to come into alignment from the inside out. That's IR. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. There's some camels. (laughs) Now, look, are are they not young and have, like, do they not look like they're expecting something? Yeah, there's my juvenile. They're kind of (laughs) silly. All right, let's start with some history. I always like to look at the history and events of IR. Now, where does all this information come from? Obviously from the scriptures, right? But also from the Talmud. The Talmud is a work of rabbinical teachings and writings for the Judaic religion. But what these rabbis did in the 2nd through the 5th century is started writing down everything that was going on with the Jews and how they had celebrated the Torah, the Old Testament, how they had interpreted it, how they held their festivals, how they, how they operated in their faith. And it's written down. And it's a good, great interpretation. We're always going to go to the scriptures as our foundation. Amen. But to know the Jewish customs and the Hebraic way of life, when they were, what was their original intent? To be the tribe, the family of God, to go out and teach to all of the world. So when we study the Talmud and we study the scriptures and we study these recipes and these festivals and these, this ritual of wealth and building, we just start gleaning and get this prophetic, beautiful window over us. So this book, Desiree, you had yours over oh, there. It is is one that Chuck Pearson, uh, Robert Heidler, put together, A Time to Advance. And um, I've seen Robert Heidler's library personally. I've been there. (laughs) And he dives deep into the Jewish scripts and the Talmuds and starts looking at these. um, How do we get back on a lunar calendar? How do we get back into alignment with God? We do that by um, studying this history and how it applies to us today and how Christ was the fulfillment of those. So in IR, we are in the Omar. We are in the transition, the middle of these three culminating months. These three months right here going from deliverance to provision. We're between worship and supply. We are in a transition, a connecting month where these three months are going to, it should be like shooting us out of a cannon for the rest of the year. Boom. I've been forgiven. That was on Lori's five words, repentance, forgiven, that's Passover by the blood of the lamb. Now we're in this Omar. We're in the seven weeks between Passover and Shavuot. Now Shavuot and Pentecost are coming up next month in Savan, Savan <coughs> where we were get the Holy Spirit fell. It's also where we got the Torah at Mount Sinai. So it is a supply, a provision month. So we're moving our expectation and building up to get the supply that we need for the entire year. So we get to month seven and we get to a tabernacle and glory with the Lord. We've been able to operate with our supply and bring an offering. So there's so many layers here. We'll unpack it as we go through the lesson. So let's talk about the Omar. Omar means sheaf, like a sheaf of barley. So Pentecost or Passover, everything is based on originally we were in an agricultural society, right? God gave us a lot of our recipes through this harvest mentality which is a beautiful picture if you think about it. What happens to the wheat? It has to die in order to, to grow. 
That's what we bring in Pass and Pentecost is our wheat. We bring our first offering of the wheat. Passover, we bring our first arvi- um, harvest, our first fruit of the barley. This still applies today. The scriptures say that of your produce, what are you producing? Bring God your first and your best. So we go through Passover, through the blood of the lamb. Who, who all did a Seder? Man, it's such a beautiful time, isn't it? It just hits me deep. And now we're counting the seven weeks. God says count the 50 days or the seven weeks between Passover and Pentecost. This is what we call counting the Omar. And there are 49 days. On the 50th day, we're going to have Pentecost and celebrate what God is going to bring. And that's when Holy Spirit fell. So think about all that happened in Jesus' time in these three months. Jesus is crucified on the cross. He's risen again. In IR, the resurrected Christ walked the earth. You want to know how to get covenant secrets? What did Christ teach to his disciples during IR? He taught them how to propel the church. He gave them the answers, the reassurance that, that I, yes, I died on the cross, see these wounds on my hand, but I am resurrected as you will be. And propelled them to where we're here 2,000 years later, still talking about the miracle and the victory of Christ that happened in these three months. So we're counting We're expecting. Everyone say expecting. Expecting. We're counting the Omar. It's cool stuff, huh? Okay, so what do they do? What is tradition when you count the Omar? So every day you would get up and you would meditate on the Lord as you were counting the Omar. And you will say this blessing. We're going to say it together here in a second. Today is the 17th day of the Omar. So I would say my blessing, and I will say today is 17 days, which is two weeks and three days of the Omar. And you just get to smile and go on because you know at the end of that 50 days, your provision is going to land. There's going to be a Pentecost celebration here Friday, May 26, 6 p.m. Come, let Holy Spirit minister to you. Bathe in that provision and then walk out with an expectation and a faith. It's all right here in the calendar. This is why I love the calendar. (laughs) Okay, so let's say this together. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us concerning the counting of the Omar. Today is 17 days, which is two weeks and three days of the Omar. Okay, you can go to Chabad.org and download an app, and that app will help you count every day. You want to see the app I have on my phone? I can show you later. Okay. Now, another part of counting the Omar is to say Psalm 67. Now, why? Look at it. There are seven verses and 49 Hebrew words in Psalm 67. Is that not cool? Seven weeks. Get it? Feast of weeks. Shavuot. 49. Omar. 49 days. Cool. Very cool. Now, when you also start breaking down these seven, you get these seven Hebraic words or foundational truths, which line up very much with what Lori just brought forth. Is that not cool? I like it when we do that. All right, so loving kindness, strength. Everyone say strength. That's a key word this month. Beauty, harmony, long-lasting success, splendor, majesty, foundation, and kingship. Psalm 67. So I encourage you. I printed mine. It's on my cork board in my kitchen. I say it every day as I count my Omar. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful psalm, of course, all the psalms. Okay. All right, IR. Guess what all happened in IR? I mean, this is amazing stuff. I, mean, I could teach you a whole lesson on the Omar, but I, I want you to do your own research. Whatever speaks to you today, dig it out or dig out one element every week in your Bible studies. That's kind of how we can see what the open heaven is for the month. To go ahead and dig into these themes, see what speaks to you, what Holy Spirit is saying to you. So in the first IR of Exodus, there was a healing of the bitter water at Myra. We're going to talk about that because that's very important for this month. We're going to deep dive into that in a minute. The second IR, the tabernacle is complete, and God's Shekinah, the heavy kavod of his spirit, fell on the tabernacle in the wilderness. In 1 Kings and IR, Solomon begins construction of the temple. In Ezra, the second temple begins in IR. Why IR? Because this is when the resurrected Christ walked the earth. God said, let me just show you from the beginning of time that Christ is the answer. Amen? 
Okay, let's talk about this IR. It's an acrostic, which means spelled forward, backward in Hebraic. The first letter of each word comes out to this scripture in Exodus 15, 26. This says, I am God, your healer. When he transferred the bitter water at Myra for Moses and the grumbling Israelites to be healthy water, he said, I don't only heal water. I heal people. I am Jehovah Rapha. Beautiful, huh? That's IR. Now, ziv means radiance. Another Hebraic word for this month. So let's put that together. Where does our healing come from? From a light, from a burst of energy from the inside of you that you were born. And when your soul was fashioned in that womb, you carry that light and that glory and that spirit of your own. That has to explode from the inside out. How do we overcome darkness? With light. I just see when I drink water, this is what I want you to remember this month. Every time you drink water, who has water? Have a drink with me. I want you to see these, this as little balls of light, okay? And you drink this water. No, I'm going to drink. Feel that burst inside of you, and every cell in your body is then commanded to come into a natural healing back to divine creation. Amen? The bitter water was healed at Myra, and it says, I am God, your healer. That is IR. So talk about transition. Okay, interesting. Transition, connection. What do we need to transition? We have to be healthy. We have to have shalom. I'm not talking about just physical health. That's important. Mind, bottle, body, and soul. Ziv. Cool, huh? Okay, overcome darkness with light. Achieve healing with an introspective month. So let's take this a step further. That means your feelings, your emotions, your intellect. Healing invo- is all encompassing. Remember, I was talking about that, that foreboding or that feeling. This is one that I battle, but you know what your battles are. But that battle of the other shoe is going to drop. All these bad things could resurface, recycle. And I set a rear guard against that. Amen. And I'm going to start building my faith and my expectation that my healing is going to overcome that soul thought that's not a spirit thought that's a lie from satan i'm gonna let i'm gonna drink my water which we should drink water if we have any nutrition yeah amen (laughs) okay and i'm going to start letting my feelings my emotions my thoughts from an inside of my gut to bubble out of me to where i speak victory i what i speak i will see And what I choose to speak is that I am a daughter of the Most High King that is healed from the inside out. Amen? Amen. That's IR. Build an expectation. Have a harvest within your own soul. Amen. Okay, remember what I was talking about? We go to Mount Sinai. Why are we always going to Mount Sinai? (laughs) My husband's like, would you please leave Mount Sinai? (laughs) It's like, yes, I absolutely, I want to go into the promised land. Absolutely. But in Mount Sinai, these Israelites, which God is trying to make our nation, our example that we need to how to operate in the earth realm, he's trying to keep them together as his family unit. And he says, all right, we're leaving Egypt. You know all their pagan gods and all their pagan ways, but I need you to come and see who I am. I need you to know the ways of me. So I'm going to take you into this mountain, and we're going to have a covenant school, and we're going to learn covenant names, and we're going to learn covenant Torah. This all happens in IR, a lot of it. Cool, huh? We get three names of God in this special time. Everyone say three. Lots of groups of three. I I have another chart for that. That'll be a whole other teaching. (laughs) All the threes. Okay. So Exodus 15, we have the bitter water at Myra. We We get the covenant name, and God's covenant names tell us who he is. He's not just those things. He can't just give you those things. He will and wants to give you those things, but he wants you to understand that this is who he is. He is healing. He is victory. He is provision. So I want to be under the shelter of the most high of the man that has those things, of the, my God. Amen. So Exodus 15, he heals the bitter water at Myron. He says, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. These are new names. 
Th these Israelites knew the stories of old, but they've been living in a pagan Egyptian culture. So they needed this school. They needed this reminder, this truth imparted into them. Exodus 16, God provides quail because why? They're complaining and grumbling. That was a big warning this month. Pay very attention to your complaints and your grumbling and turn them around. Say something different. So think and align your emotions with something more victorious, more healthy. Oop, back up. Okay, so he says, I will provide you quail in response. And he says, because why would I do that? Because I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm the God that provides. I will always provide for you. Amen. Exodus 17, Moses is having a war with the Amalekites, and he's raising his hand to the Lord in praise. Everyone say praise. We learned last month how we go forth with sound and praise to get to this Connect and trans Transition Month to get our healing so that we can get our supply next month. See how it all goes together? Holding his hands high. They're winning the war. What happens when he drops his hands? When he takes his eyes off the Lord? He says, keep your hands in praise and in adoration and worship to me because I am Jehovah Nisi, the Lord and the banner of your victory. This is IR. Three names of God. So is he wanting to connect with you this month? Is he wanting to, is he wanting to rip the rug out from under you as Yolanda has been saying? I say yes, but he wants, to wo he wants to make a new tapestry. He wants to weave a tapestry with you. Amen. So how do we do that? Well, it's all good and fine when we learn this information, but how? How do, we, how do we grab it? The only way I can tell you is that you have to have your intimate time with the Lord. You have to learn how to hear the Lord for yourself, and you have to learn to build your faith and expectation on your own. We can coach you. We can lead you. We can mentor you. We can show you by example, but you have to put in the time. God wants a relationship with you. He wants to show you these covenant secrets. And the only way he can do that is to give you wisdom so that you can see and hear properly. Because our culture and our world and Satan are counteractive. They're, they're, they're moving against that. And the cool thing about our God is he says, give me one part and I will give you the rest. Give me 10%. He doesn't say, I need you... All day, every day, he says, give me 10% of your time and of your money and of your worship. And then 90%, you will be able to walk out in that culture and be victorious. But how many times do we get to walking out there and we forget to get back to our 10%? <laughs> what happens to me? That's why I love to teach first fruits for my own accountability. It brings me back out of that slow drift. It sets me back into alignment, back on this with Shabbat, one in seven days. He says, rest and talk and restore in me, and the other six days you can go and conquer. If you want provision, you have to trust me and rest in me on that one day, on that first day of the month, on my feasts and my festivals. Give me those moads and that intimacy and dive into what I have for you, and the explosion of victory and light and healing is incomprehensible. Okay. The scriptures are clear. How do we get wisdom? We spend covenant time with our Lord. Daniel, he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. It is he who reveals the profound and hidden things. He knows what's in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. The what? Light. The light. Matthew, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. He, does, he, he doesn't want it to be a mystery or a secret. He wants to tell you. He wants to show you your peace, how you operate in your, your part. James says, if you, any of you lacks wisdom, what do you do? You ask God, and he will give it to you. Some of us want to ask our family. We want to ask our friends. We want to ask our coworkers. We want to ask Yolanda. Yeah. <laughs> I always want to know what she has to say, no doubt about it. But who do I really need to ask? God. And then if Yolanda and my friends and my coworkers and my family all line up with that, that's just confirmation. Yeah. Amen. I need to be asking God. So what does your quiet time look like? For me, it's journaling. That, I mean, that's how I can really move. And, you know, I journal. I'll write. I start with the scripture as my foundation, and I'll write scripture until that revelation starts coming, and I just journal and write. And, you know, I hardly ever look back at my journals, but it's just my way of processing, getting that next piece, that next inspiration. 
Figure out what works for you. Some of you use music, which is beautiful. Okay, let's talk about Vav. Everyone say Vav. Think of a tent peg. How many of you ever went camping in Oklahoma wind? What do you need? <laughs> Lots of pegs, right? <laughs> Nailed down? Yeah, that's what a Vav. A Vav is like a tent peg. It's a connecting piece. But it is so much deeper than that. That's what I love about, I mean, the alphabet. I don't know. Is it the tribes of the alphabet I like more? That, that's really, yeah, that's up in the air for me. <laughs> but this alphabet is beautiful because it has a number, a pictograph, a meaning. And I love this scripture right here. For verily I say unto you, Jesus says, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle shall pass from the law till it is all fulfilled. So the prophetic words and pictures we get from the alphabet, Jesus assures us that those scriptures will be fulfilled. So will there be a new Jerusalem? Amen. Amen. Will there be a time where we no longer have to live under the sin way of Satan? Amen. And we, we can start that today. That, that's something that Yolanda's taught us effectively. That starts now. We don't have to wait for Jesus' second come. We anticipate it. We want it. And we will get the fullness of it. But we can start now. Which is why we dig it out through this Hebraic calendar for alignment, right? Okay. So Vav is number six. Everyone say six. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and... Let's say it again. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. A vav is an and. This is the first place you see vav in the scriptures, in the Hebraic, is this and in Genesis 1-1. So what is he saying? You, Stacy, Melissa, Wendy, are the vav. You are the and. You are the connection between heaven and earth. Do you have any idea how much authority you carry? If you plant your feet on that earth and you look to heaven, you are unstoppable when you do it with Christ. Amen? So this is a connecting power, a divine hook that brings together heaven and earth. And number six equals man. Man was created on the what day? Sixth day. Humans are God's connection and stewards of the earth. What was created on the first day? Light. <laughs> Just a little play, okay. All right, constellation Taurus. When you think of an ox or a bull, what do you think? I mean, when I think of an ox especially, they got that yoke on them, they're pulling, they're moving, they're strong, but I want you to almost glorify that ox to be even bigger and stronger and animated and full of just this majestic being. This is a Taurus. And the seven stars are on its back. The seven churches, the Vav, the humans on the earth, ride the strength of our God and our Christ and our Holy Spirit to be the connectors in the earth realm. This is Taurus. Do you see how all the elements layer and build and grow and go together? Remember I said strength is a huge word. This is Taurus the bull. This is the constellation in your stars. So how they come up with the constellations It's not astronomy. That's just someone's big fat game. It's astrology, astro, you know, astronomy. The stars have names and meanings just like the alphabet. And we put those together, we get these beautiful pictures. And when God aligns them in certain ways, he's telling us the times and the seasons. That's what the scriptures say. So what is Taurus telling us? He's given us a calendar and a piece. He's an animal of great strength. He's an animal of eating, growing, and progressing, harvest, strength. Amen? Okay, Hebrew word for bull is sure, which means to return. We're always going to return back to our source of strength, which is Christ. The, uh, these are the star names that we were talking about. Polites is a cluster of seven stars. In Hebrew, it means the gathering. In Greek, it means the many. And it means a congregation, that's us, the churches, right on the back of the bull and the strength in the constellations. How cool is that? So the constellations tell us what God is doing. Satan would like you to believe the stars tell you what you're doing. What's your astrological sign, right? That's, that's not wasn't God's intention. His intention was to tell you the time and the seasons through the stars of what he's doing in the earth realm. When we saw the star of Bethlehem, why? Because he's telling us the king of kings is here on earth with you. During IR, he's even resurrected. Cool, huh? 
Okay, so Revelations, Christ holds these seven stars in his hand, referring to the seven gatherings, the seven churches. This is Taurus, based on the star names and groups that are in the constellation, above, in the skies, in Jerusalem at night, this month. Cool? Okay, everyone say Issachar. Do you know how I remember to spell Issachar? <laughs> Yolanda already knows. Okay, do you know what the picture for Issachar is? It's a donkey. Do you see a certain word in Issachar that reminds you of a donkey? <laughs> this is how I remember to spell it. Anyway, I just thought that was funny. Okay. <laughs> Issachar is one of the tribes of Israel. They are an Issachar anointing. Everyone say Issachar anointing. This house is a house of Issachar. You are in a house of Issachar. This house has an apostolic anointing for times and seasons. So yeah, Yolanda led me to this calendar, and I went little nuts over it, but this is what we do here. This is what we do. Okay, fullness is time, position, movement, and order. The study of the tribes brings us all of this revelation because God said, let me give you a recipe you cannot deny. These 12 fellas are as broken as you are. But these 12 fellas are also very redemptive. And they have a position and a time and a place to move this nation forward towards Christ. That's what the tribes show us. So which tribe do you resonate with? Well, this month, the tribe we want to study is Issachar. It's like a character study. What was good? What was bad? How do we progress and see that that applies to a governmental body here in the earth realm? 12 is a governmental number. How many apostles did we have? How many tribes do we have? How many gates into New Jerusalem? How many breastplate? 12. How many constellations? How many months? Do you get it? 12, 12, 12, 12. So when we look at tribes, we're looking at personalities. Every personality has a place. Every personality gets put in the lineup. Every personality has even a wartime mission. Very cool. Just like we do today. Leadership team, 12. Governmental. Okay, in Genesis 49, this is where we get the prophetic words for the month, and we really dive into these character studies. One is the prophetic words spoken to them by Moses and one by Jacob, their father, Israel. And we look at those and discern what is more in the open heaven this month. So this is the second month on the Hebraic lunar calendar. Issachar was in the second position of the alignment of the tribes around the tabernacle given to Moses by God where his Shekinah fell, where they were in covenant school. They are number two. Each tribe has a stone of the breastplate. We've talked about that um, so that their priest could represent all of them. Everyone say all. all. Do you see the picture here? It wasn't just going to be the Israelites. It was going to be all the nations of the earth were represented and allowed to go into the temple. These are the things we learn when we study the tribes. Okay, Issachar is a raw bone donkey. Everyone say donkey. So actually, you would think, oh, that's not that glorious. Like, I'm more than likely of the Issachar tribe. I resonate more there. I don't want a donkey to be. I want a lion. Uh -huh. Right? right. <laughs> or even a fish. I don't know, a donkey. But when you study and you see what's going on, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I can do a donkey. It's close to a camel. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Issachar is a raw bone donkey lying down between two saddlebags. Here again, we see the three. When he sees how good is his resting place and how pleasant is his land, he will bend his shoulder to the burden and submit to the forced labor. What is that saying? When you know how good the kingdom of God is, when you get a taste of it, when you get a vision of it, you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death, can you not? You will have the provision you need, you will have the healing you need, and you can go through some wilderness type activity because you can see what's so rewarding and you've got your peace and your mission and you're unstoppable with the light of IR and the work of Christ. Amen. This is what the donkey represents. He's got in his saddlebags, he's willing to do the work. Those apostles did not die a beautiful death, now did they? But they had no hesitation because they knew, they had the vision and the revelation of what Christ was promising them, that they could walk through even some of the most horrible deaths this earth has to offer. 
This is what the donkey, this is Issachar, the time and the seasons to know that you are walking in that kind of alignment. That is faith, my friends. It's not always happy. You know, we're, uh, we want to live what, we want all the material things to make us feel cozy. I'm, I'm as bad as the rest of you. I want all the clothes, all the cars, all the, but this, this is where it's at. Okay. <laughs> Issachar was known as the Torah tribe. And why? Where, how do we know that? Because in the Chronicles, David says, these tribes came to help me on Hebron. These tribes were putting me back on the throne. You know that everything was put back in alignment with David. You know, the worship, the 24-7 Holy Spirit connection, the Levites. He was trying to put everything back as the man of God. And he said, the sons of Issachar stood by me and told me what the times and seasons and what God was saying. So there is a mouthpiece to say, this is an alignment with God. This is not. That's an Issachar anointing. And it's very prophetic and very futuristic because you've got to know how to move. That's the Issachar anointing. There's a cute donkey, huh? <laughs> Position perfectly. Now, get this. This is huge. Like, I don't think I can even articulate it enough. This is no mistake. It is position between praise and worship and what? Supply. How do you get the provision you need to walk in your divine abilities? Praise, worship, covenant, intimacy, revelation, provision, connection, transition. This three months is going to project you for the whole year. Amen? The Issachar anointing is to understand the times and the seasons to be able to say this is not God's plan. Why do, okay, what is Satan's number one goal? Why do you think we're on the Gregorian calendar? Because he doesn't want you in God's alignment and timing. He doesn't want you to know these things. He will speak against the most high and oppress the saints and change the times and the laws. He's a liar. But he's more than a liar. He's so deceptive. He wants to move you out of your time and in your place. No. Everyone say no. No. Not doing that. Okay. All right, let's wrap it up. Three months. Everyone say them with me. Nissan, IR, Savant. We got to start learning these, okay? Nissan, IR, Savant. Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, which represent worship, praise, timing, supply. Do you see it? Passover, redemption, deliverance, forgiveness, connection, timing, secrets, revelation, supply, provision. Barley harvest, wheat harvest, bring in you my first fruits, my crops. Jesus was the first fruit of the fallen man that was resurrected to heaven. He is a first fruit. Rosh Kadesh, what are we doing? We're doing the first fruit of the month. We left Egypt. We got our training, and we went to the promised land. Do you see these threes, this transition? This will shoot you out of a cannon if I could. Okay, crucifixion, Jesus walks the earth as a resurrected teacher this month. And then we get Holy Spirit to continue to fuel us, give us wisdom, right? And align your emotions along the way. All right, I made this last year. I don't know if you remember, I got pretty excited about it. <laughs> Do anyone use Canva? Yeah, I know she, Marissa knows. Anyway, I always play around on that. It's pretty fun. But I just like this imagery right here. Remember the saddlebags? What's in the middle there? Christ. Man. Right between God and Holy Spirit. We're positioned, guys. Christ did the work for us. We're already there. The supply's already there. We just have to have an expectation. Is that fun? Okay. I also, another little imagery, in case I didn't give you enough already. You're going to drink your water. You're going to see a sunburst, right? You're going to see a donkey. I guarantee you're going to see a donkey this month. Or you can think about walking up the steps. Here's another imagery for you, right? Let's all walk up our steps. First, we're going to walk through Passover. We're going to reconfirm our covenant. We're going to get delivered and redeemed and forgiven. And then I'm going to come up to my school, get some more training, some more information, some more uh, grit, confidence, 
and then I'm going to go get my supply, and then I'm going to go and reap that harvest. Amen? Amen. All right, 5783, this is the Hebraic year for divine recovery and increased supply lines. Your camels are coming in. They're bringing in extra. Who needs extra supply this year? Who can believe with me that this is the wealthiest of years? Yeah. Amen. All right, I'm going to pray these over you, and then I'm going to let Selena show you her beautiful picture. So you close your eyes and do whatever you need to do to receive this, okay? Because I want to pray based on this prophetic words in this open heaven that all 11 systems in your body have a natural healing take place this month, that your emotions and your thoughts will be brought into divine health. I pray that secrets and revelations be released to you in this connecting month. I pray an Issachar anointing continue to increase. That anointing is already here, folks. I pray it continues to increase and move and operate to understand our time and seasons even better in the earth realm. I pray that you come into the fullness of the body of Christ. We desire God's timing, position, movement, and order, and we are vol. We are the vol of the kingdom to the earth, and we're going to spread it everywhere we go. So I pray that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I ask that we continue to move into prosperity and walk from blessing to blessing, strength to strength, glory to glory. And they all said, amen. Amen. Look at this healing tent. Who wants to go in there? Come tell us about it, Selena. Oh, you can only look at it for so long. Just kidding. All right, so this one is entitled Inner Healing for the month of IR, and these are the words that God gave with it. God desires us to be healthy, whole, and free from bondage. His desire is for our whole well-being, both outward and inward. This picture depicts his divine knowledge of times and seasons. It also shows his central theme of making us whole by providing his light and life into the deepest part of who we are healing our inevitable wounds from living in a fallen world. The day and night shown together represents God's times and seasons, his timing in the earth and in our lives. The medical tent represents our need for healing and the healing that is offered to us through the work and love of Jesus. The lighted doorway represents our inner healing. Our Father is interested not only in the miraculous healing of our physical bodies, but also desires for us to receive our inner healing as well. The water at the bottom represents his mighty flow of healing, making us clean. Sometimes it is a soft rain, as on the left side, and sometimes it feels like a mighty rushing torrent. Yeah. In the original picture, this is um, kind of an altered one. In the original one, he had me put the vav in the middle of the doorway just representing Christ and his light, but also the connection between both of us. So, okay, and we will move into communion now. I did add the water. That's what I shifted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, (laughs) that's right, the water, water particles. Oh, Gail, yep, sorry. Gail and then communion. Here, I'll hold this for you. You can hold it. Okay. Um, We have... I had two things this month because last year I had a prophecy about the water and IR and um, I made this painting to represent the transition that we're going through. This is the month of transition and I had a vision and prophecy for Yolanda that healing water was going to come somehow through her. She was going to add healing to the earth and start first with the water and then go into the land. And we were to remember that we're 60% made of water, and God formed us from the earth and the land. So there's the water transitioning, and then there's the, the people there could represent Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or it can also represent Father, Mother, and Child. Both, rep- both are kind of like interchangeable. 
Three also represents completeness, fullness, God's loving kindness, knowledge, goodness, and carries and uplifts. And the dark color, which is actually the beginning part, but I read it differently, the dark color represents the bitterness and the unclean water and the ocean and its life represents the healing water as it spreads forth to the land and it will heal mankind. And the scripture part that the Lord gave me for this month is he changes the times and seasons and gives us wisdom and knowledge to reveal his deep secrets, Daniel 2, 12 through 22. And that is what I have for this month. Let's stand. I was thinking this morning about the disciples and the followers of Christ during this time between um, Passover and Pentecost. You know, Yolanda talked last week about having the, the rug pulled out from under you. Can you imagine the size of the rug that was yanked out from underneath the, the followers of Jesus at Passover? They had prayed for generation after generation after generation for the coming Messiah, and here he was, but they had their own idea of what the Messiah looked like and what the Messiah was going to do. And so now in this time he's resurrected, they have an opportunity to learn from him what, what his vision is and what his victory was but I f figure some of them were getting back on that same rug because now that Jesus had been resurrected now Jesus could heal bring back from the dead he could come back from the dead this is really the real Messiah and we're going to defeat Rome we're going to we're going to come back into the glory days you know King Solomon and uh, they were they were still looking for that old idea of what victory was, and Jesus was trying to teach them. He was about to go into Pentecost and say, okay, the victory has been won. Now you just need to go out in the world and live out that victory and show the world what that victory is. So that brings me to us. If we find ourselves on our backside a lot because the rug keeps getting yanked out from under us, maybe... Maybe we've got our own ideas of what victory is. So as we take this communion this morning, remember Jesus has the victory. The victory has already been won. Let's get into alignment with what his idea of victory is, not our own idea of victory. So Jesus, we thank you that the victory is won. That by your blood we are saved. By your blood we have forgiveness and salvation. And now it is ours to walk out, to walk in victory and to tell the world and show the world how to walk in victory. We thank you so much, and we love you in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Jesus, that by your brokenness, we can walk in wholeness, not only in ourselves, but also in, as the body, as the one new man, we can walk in wholeness and fellowship and covenant with one another. We thank you also that our provision is found in you, that you have the provision, it's on our path, it is there, we just have to trust in it, and trust that your provision doesn't always look like what we think provision looks like, so give us eyes to see your provision, Lord, in Jesus' name. Kevin keeps telling me this messes up all the stuff if I don't use the mic. I want to just, as before we transition into this next season of worship right now, I want you all to know one of the ways you can find out if you're in God's link or if you are not is to look at our lawn outside. How many of you look at that and go, what is wrong with Gary? Why is he not mowing this lawn? What is wrong with the weeds? Okay, this is the transition. This is moving the ground, literally, from a place that had no nutrients, that had a lot of stuff in it, and now it's been worked on and worked on all winter long, 
And God is saying, stop looking at those weeds and seeing weeds. See flowers. Stop looking at that hay and going, ah, where is the manicured lawn? Is everybody hearing me? Some of you, it irritates you. You just walk by and you just get irritated. But God is saying to you, let me recreate some definitions for you. Let me give you a different perspective. Because it's going to take probably another three weeks for the grass that is really underneath there that God wants to come out to be ready to be mowed. Are you in that place? Are you pushing God's timing? God is saying to you, this is a season you must be in his timing. If you're not in his timing, no matter how pure your heart is, and how much you hear the word of God, if you do it out of his timing, it's not going to work. And that's one of the biggest things that we all miss. Is we hear, oh, God wants me to talk to so-and-so and straighten them out and do this stuff. But I do it in my own timing. And I mess up the whole talk. Are you listening? So today God is trying to talk to you and he's trying to correct your timing. He's trying to correct you so that he can get you into his timing so for the rest of the year you will flow with him instead of doing your own thing. And right now so many of you are running into resistance and problems because you're not flowing with his timing. That's what the vav is for. It's to stick inside of you and say, be in alignment with God's timing in heaven not the timing of man here on earth. So I want to pray for you before we go into this worship because you've got to learn to hear him and to get out of the seasons of man. I don't care how religious it sounds. You've got to get out of the seasons of man. So Father God, we come. We give you great praise. We give you great thanksgiving that you have given us grace to walk this far. And Father, none of us have arrived. None of us have gotten to the place where we get you every moment of the day and we get it all straightened out, but we really are going to try. We really are saying that, Father, we can give you as much time in our earthly days as you want. If you want a whole day, we'll give it. If you want a tenth of every day, a tenth of what a day would be, then we'll give it. We will give to you our time because you need to give us wisdom. You need to give us answers. You need to help us transition well from the time of deliverance and repentance to the time of supply. And Father, I know your heart, and you will not give them supply if their heart is not right because they will use it wrong. It's like giving people millions of dollars that they won and then they cannot keep it because they do not know how to steward it and they do not know how to use it. So, Father, this month is a transition for our heart. It is the bridge. It is the thing that must transition. So we're asking, Father God, for your wisdom. I ask that, Holy Spirit, you put the burden on every single one of us to have a deeper quieter, more purposeful relationship with you. And that's where you'll give us your secrets. That's where you'll tell us what to do. That's when our heart will be in alignment with our spirit and you will be able to speak to our soul. So we say to every soul in this room that is not yet healed and is not yet redeemed, I say, be quiet, hush, let the sound of the Most High King reverberate through each of us. And we give him the praise and the glory and the honor with every beat of our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, so we're going to move into another portion of worship. And we have two songs, and as I think about what they are and I hear the teaching today, I believe they are very much covenant sound songs. And so one of them you know probably but it's in Hebrew, so have fun. And the, <laughs> and the other one is just all about the covenant names of God, and so I love that. She doesn't want to do the Hebrew. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, and then we're going to have pinnacles.
come and dance us out into the month of IR. And so that will be beautiful. And then we will sound the shofar at the end. All right? Okay, let's do it. Go team. <laughs> Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Baruch Shem Kivon Malchuto
quantum physics is everything. It's because it is the language of faith. That's what you have to understand. If you actually, there is no physicist that actually studies quantum physicists that doesn't get, this is all about faith. It isn't about something that you can do the same thing every time. So why it's so important for you to know that is it says in this quantum physics theory is very close to what God's saying is everybody in here has a frequency. Everybody in here has a frequency. Some of you have negative frequencies along with your positive frequencies. And so it makes it hard for you to sometimes figure out what God is saying. But why God wants to release the sound of the shofar is because this is an instrument of God that blows out his frequency. It blows out his sound. And what it is, it's, it's like a repositioning or a transitioning thing that happens when that sound hits your cells of your physical body and your soul and your spirit. And what it does is it says, align with me. So it's the sound that when you hear that sound, literally every cell in your body is going, that's my creator. And it goes, whoa, 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 whoa. And it's like it releases it. So before we hear the sound of this shofar today, we're going to say, Father God, every negative frequency in us, everything that's a sickness or an emotional wrong thing or a religious thing, 
Everything that's in us that opposes the Most High King, can we say that? Mm -hmm. Father, forgive us and take it away. Take it away. And in its place, we ask that you give us your frequency. You give us your sound. So when you hear the sound today, just be in agreement that everything in you, you may not even know what's wrong in you, but he does. So if you're just in agreement, Father God, I want your sound to be in me, whatever it looks like, so that your light, because sound and light is the same. Because when your light comes in me, then that's what I broadcast. So he says in his word that this shofar is his sound. And that's why it's so powerful for it to wash over you and through you today. So would you stand as Selena blows the sound of God over you and let yourself be realigned into the correct frequencies of God? <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this day, and we go forth with the understanding we're transitioning, and we're coming into that new place, and we're excited to be in that new place. So, Father, we just thank you that your Holy Spirit sends your angels to minister to us, through us, and for us today, to help us navigate this place. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray, and we said amen, and then we say, Yeah! yeah. <laughs>